Yo guys, welcome to the Zelda Fiction. Today we are gonna see, what if Naruto was the Dragon Sage and became a legend. Part 1. Huge shout out to Kagi925 for this story. If you end up liking this video, please consider subscribe, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Naruto was fuming. He had spent the better part of his day walking through the streets of Konoha ranting out loud. Not only did Kakashi Sensei blow me off to go train the team but my replacement Sensei is a joke. He sighed in frustration. Guess I'll have to train on my own then. It was then that he heard the sound of giggling not too far off, so he decided to investigate. Naruto walked closer to the origin of the sound and the sight before him made him sweat drop. Before his very eyes stood a grown man with long spiky white hair crouched down, staring intently through a peep hole into the women's hot springs and giggling like a pervert. Naruto stared for a moment before deciding to let the prankster side of him take over. He took a deep breath and shouted hey. Why are you peeping into the women's hot spring old man? At the mention of a pervert the women in the hot spring shot a death glare at the newly discovered peep hole. Upon seeing this, Jiraiya promptly fell on his face. He stared up at Naruto with fear in his eyes. How could you do this to me? He shouted hysterically. Naruto began to smirk calm down, all I did was ruin your little show. No. Jiraiya began. You don't understand. Jiraiya froze as he felt eyes peer into his very soul. He turned slowly to face a group of half-naked women clothed only in towels. He laughed nervously and said hey ladies. The women, seeing that Jiraiya was still crouched near the peephole, deduced that he must be the pervert. So one of them taking the lead yelled show him what happens to perverts girls. The color in Jiraiya's face vanished like the avatar, a slash n get it? No. I'll stop. As the group of women deck ended upon him. Fortunately one of the girls in the front of the group tripped, falling on Jiraiya and pushing her fleshy mounds into his face. Realizing the compromising position she was in the woman shot up onto her feet with a blush and ran away grumbling about touchy perverts. Looking at Jiraiya, one could see that his face was one of pure bliss. The group of women, undeterred, deck-ended Wapn the old sage and began to beat the life out of him. During this whole spectacle Naruto was off to the side snickering. Once their rage subsided and they were satisfied with the now bloody man, the ladies went back about their business. As Naruto was about to turn around and find somewhere to train Jiraiya shot up from the ground seemingly unfazed by his previous beating. He looked to Naruto, grabbed him by the shoulders and said I think I'm in love. That woman's body was so voluptuous and her boobs were so soft and. Naruto spoke. What are you even talking about? And who are you? Who am I? I am Jiraiya. The one and only toad sage of Mount Mayaboku. Jiraiya exclaimed as he struck a pose. And for your involvement in getting me so close to such a beautiful woman I will grant you one request. Anything? Naruto asked. Anything? Jiraiya repeated. Naruto thought for a moment before saying well, I still need a sensei to teach me about ninja stuff. Consider it done. And I know just the jutsu to teach you. Before Naruto could say anything the old sage placed his hand on Naruto's shoulder and shunshined away. Suddenly Naruto found himself beside a stream with Jiraiya not too far away. Okay kid let's start your training. Jiraiya declared. Naruto glared at the man. Hey you can't just whisk people away like that you old perv. He exclaimed. Jiraiya deadpanned. Do you want to learn this super cool jutsu or not? Naruto frowned but kept quiet to listen. Okay Jiraiya started. Here's what you gotta do. First you need to draw blood Jiraiya bit his thumb and continue with the lesson. Then you need five hand seals, boar, dog, bird, monkey, then ram in that order. And finally, summoning Jutsu. Jiraiya slammed his palm on the ground and in a poof of smoke a giant toad appeared. Naruto's jaw hit the floor. That's amazing. I've never seen anything like that before. Jiraiya closed his eyes to bask in the praise his new student was giving him. 
Jiraiya missed the look of determination that flashed across Naruto's face, and by the time he opened his eyes it was too late. He saw Naruto with a bloody thumb going through the hand seals of the summoning jutsu. Wait Naruto. You can't. Summoning jutsu. Naruto rammed his palm into the ground and in a classic poof of smoke, he vanished. Jiraiya stared dumbfounded at the space that Naruto had just occupied. This is why I can't have an apprentice. They always do dumb shit and get themselves killed. Jiraiya exclaimed with anime tears running down his face. Naruto found himself in a strange unfamiliar area. It was cold and the air seemed thin. As he looked around he could see only trees. Not knowing where he was he decided to simply walk in one direction until he found something. And so Naruto started walking. After some time passed Naruto began to hear things. It almost sounded like something was moving through the trees, like something was stalking him waiting for an opportunity to strike. Naruto looked up to the trees but saw nothing. Unnerved at the thought of being hunted down by animals, Naruto began jogging through the forest until he reached a clearing. The sound of giant wings beating through the air stopped him in his tracks as he looked to the skies to see three dragons, each the size of a house, deck end to the ground and surround him. Each dragon was a different color, the one to his right was red, the one in front of him was blue and the one on his left was green. Naruto stared at these mythical beasts in awe. He hadn't known that dragons even existed. One of the dragons took this moment to lower his head and inspect Naruto fully. The dragon looked Naruto up and down and finally made eye contact. The dragon stared Naruto down, and Naruto stared back. Seemingly done with his inspection the dragon raised his head and spoke. How have you found this place? Um, the last thing I remember was attempting the summoning jutsu, and then I ended up here. What is this place anyway? Naruto inquired. For starters, I shall introduce myself, I am Chishiki and these are my two brothers Chikara he said looking to the red dragon. And Jakuna he said looking to the green dragon. This place is called the throat of the world, it's a mountain home to the dragon summons. Naruto grinned at them and introduced himself as well my name's Naruto Uzumaki suddenly Naruto's eyes widened with surprise as he registered what the dragon had said you guys are summons. At his outburst the three dragons nodded their heads. Naruto grinned in excitement and at the prospect of riding a dragon into battle. With these powerful summons by his side he could finally gain the village's respect and he could become Hokage. Seeing Naruto's excitement the red dragon named Chikara spoke calm yourself runt, you cannot summon us. Naruto looked to him, confused why not. I can perform the summoning jutsu just fine, that's how I got here in the first place. The summoning jutsu is supposed to bring a summoned creature like myself to you, not the other way round. The only plausible reason you could have appeared here is because you did not have a summoning contract at the time you attempted the jutsu, but even then the jutsu should have just failed. Chishiki commented. Jakuna continued so you cannot summon us because you have not signed our contract. Naruto asked so all I have to do to summon you is sign your contract. Chikara spoke. Not just anyone can summon the mighty dragons. To display your worthiness you must first pass a trial, only then will you be able you summon us. Like a test. A test for what? Naruto questioned. There are three different sections, my section is a trial of the subconscious mind, where nothing is hidden and your true self is revealed. Chishiki responded. Undeterred Naruto asked how do I take the test? You must simply look into my eyes Chishiki said. Naruto turned to meet the gaze of the dragon and as their eyes met Chishiki's eyes began to gleam with a mysterious intensity. Naruto could almost feel the dragon peering into his psyche, as if he wasn't alone in his own head. It was a strange and unsettling feeling, one that made his heart sink. After about a minute Chishiki's eyes stopped glowing, he shook his head and spoke young and hopeful, yet haunted by the demon he is unaware of, wishing to lead and protect the very people that damned him. He squinted his eyes in thought. You pass, hold out your wrist. Naruto did as he was asked and Chishiki spit a ball of fire that struck his wrist. Although the fire did not cause him pain it left Chishiki's mark behind. With this mark you will no longer need the hand seals to summon me. Cool. 
Naruto was excited that he could now summon a dragon but he wanted to pass the other tests as well. What's next? Naruto questioned. My test is next run Chikara spoke. If you want to gain my mark you must withstand my flame. Naruto furrowed his brow and steeled himself for the pain. He held out his wrist for the dragon to begin the test. You can always turn back runt, my flames burn hotter than hellfire. Do it. He nodded and took a deep breath, then he released a continuous gout of fire that very slowly singed Chikara's mark onto his wrist. Naruto gritted his teeth. He could feel every skin cell burn with the intensity of the sun and become ash, but he held strong and endured. Halfway through the test the stream of fire intensified and the flames turned blue. The fire is getting hotter. Naruto thought. Aajjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjjj
one would only need to look at his hero the fourth Hokage to prove that fact. Have you come to challenge me boy? Mundana's voice reverberated throughout the cave. Naruto was shaking slightly, but he spoke anyway. I, I have to beat you. You. Beat me. If you wish to add to my home decor Mundana glances to the pile of bones beside him. Be my guest. You're too weak to be more than a human shield, and even then you're too much of a squirt to protect anything. Naruto gripped his kunai tightly in anger. Who was this dragon to insult him? He had no idea what Naruto had been through. He had no idea how hard Naruto trained to get to where he is. Feeling angry little one. Perhaps it's because you know I speak the truth. I'd wager you're the type that talks a big game but freezes when death comes knocking. You're weak. An image of the demon brothers flashed through his mind and he grew increasingly irritated. Naruto is known to be many things and being brash and impulsive are definitely some of those things. Naruto, in a flurry of rage sent his kunai sailing towards Mundana. Seeing this, the dragon smirked and simply batted the small knife away with its wing. In a burst of speed Mundana sent a barrage of bones flying up from the ground and towards Naruto, like a million pieces of organic shrapnel. Naruto raised his arms in an X to block some of these deadly projectiles. When the volley was over he could feel the paces of bone that were embedded into his flesh. Naruto looked to Mundana, only the dragon was no longer there, behind the cover of the barrage he had quickly moved to a new position. The question was, where? Naruto quickly created two clones and formed a small triangle standing back to back. Each Naruto drew a kunai as their eyes wandered searching for their foe. Suddenly a poof of smoke could be heard, looking to his right Naruto could see that his clone had been vanquished. Without warning a second poof was heard and before Naruto could process what happened he felt a sharp pain in his back as he was launched forward. Landing face first into a pile of bones, Naruto could feel three huge claw marks on his back. He rose up to look around but again, the dragon was nowhere to be seen. Kami this thing is fast. At this rate I'll never beat him. At this thought a light bulb appeared over Naruto's head, which immediately flickered out but, whatever. Hey Mundana. Are you so scared of me that you'll only fight me from the shadows? Show yourself. Chuckling could be heard echoing throughout the cave. Mundana began moving towards Naruto, emerging from the darkness. Most people would think it unwise to antagonize me. Naruto smirked yeah well, I'm not most people. Naruto launched his kunai towards Mundana, aimed for his head. Mundana lifted his wing and blocked the incoming projectile but in the process blocked Naruto from view. The dragon continued his slow trek towards Naruto. That trick didn't work the first time, what makes you think it would work now? Naruto shrugged and said I planned a few steps ahead this time. Naruto quickly kicked up the pile of bones he was standing on sending them flying the same way Mundana had done in the beginning of the fight. For the third time Mundana began to raise his wing in order to block the incoming shrapnel, but suddenly three of the bones transformed into Naruto's. Seeing this, his eyes widened but there was no time to react as one of the clones grabbed a hold of his wing, setting him off balance. The second clone grabbed his other wing, and the third clone grappled his neck knocking him onto his back and pinning him to the ground. Quickly the third clone pulled something out of his pouch and held out for the dragon to see. Flash bomb. Mundana struggled to get free but it was too late. The cave was eveloped in a white blinding light that expanded outwards with Mundana at its epicenter. As the light fadded away Naruto lifted his hands off his eyes and he could see Mundana lightly pawing and rubbing at his eyes, trying to regain his sight. Naruto ran off into the depths of the cave, as he passed Mundana he laughed and yelled take that you stupid lizard. Eventually while delving deeper into the caves he began to see light, he continued to run towards it until the cave expanded into one extremely large room. Naruto skidded to a stop. This must be where the boss is he thought aloud. As Naruto glanced around he noticed streams of lava flowing in every direction, illuminating the cavern just enough for him to see. Wandering through the cavern he began to wonder where the boss summon was. He stumbled upon a river of lava, 
the lava seemed to flow much faster in this river than the other smaller streams so he decided to follow it. Eventually he discovered a lake of lava and in it lied a dragon so massive that it was comparable in size to the bijou. It seemed as if the dragon could sense Naruto's presence as he opened his eyes to stare Naruto down. Naruto became entranced with the beauty of the dragon's eye. There were no pupils but in their place was a continuous swirling image of black with specks of red, white, and blue. It was as if when Naruto looked into the eyes of this dragon he could see the creation and subsequent infinite expansion of the cosmos. It was then that Naruto was broken out of his trance, the dragon had spoken. No mortal has made it to my chambers before, what is your name? Naruto gulped, just the mere presence of this being made him doubt himself. Was he worthy to speak while in the company of such a powerful dragon? Naruto could feel the raw power that rolled off this beast in waves, like those guys that put on three bottles of super strong cologne before going somewhere. It was suffocating. Nevertheless Naruto steeled himself and spoke my name is Naruto Uzumak. I'm here to become a dragon sage. Naruto Uzumaki, this is a name I will remember. I am Akai Shur, king of the dragons. Naruto chuckled slightly the Red Death, a fitting name for a beast so powerful, he thought. Naruto was about to speak when he heard footsteps behind him. He looked back to see Mundana walking towards him. His presence put Naruto on edge but it didn't seem like Mundana was there to harm him. The dragon seemed much more relaxed and didn't have that aura of intimidation he had when they fought. Ah Mundana there you are, where were you? You haven't forgotten the rules have you? Of course not my king but this one is rather cunning Mundana said while glancing at Naruto. Naruto looked between the two dragons and questions began to surface. Wait, what rules are you talking about? Akai sure faced Naruto and spoke you've come to become a dragon sage, and there are rules in place that help you to progress through the trials given to you. Now Mundana spoke for example, when we fought I was not allowed to use my abilities in order to give you a chance to succeed. I was also supposed to escort you into these royal chambers. Akai Shur's gaze on Mundana intensified. And why exactly, did you not escort him here? The smaller dragon shrunk into himself and his gaze met the ground. The boy had realized that it was imposable to defeat me so he blinded me with a flash bomb, and by the time I regained my sight he was already gone. Akai Shur seemed to be pondering over something, so he was able to determine the difference in strength between them and still come up with a plan to reach me. Not to mention that he passed the three brothers' tests as well, perhaps there is more to this boy than meets the eye. He thought. A tear a moment of thinking Akai Shur spoke the words Naruto had been waiting for. Very well then, I hereby declare you the sole summoner of the dragons and the very first dragon sage. Naruto jumped for joy and in a huge grin, showed off his pearly whites. His face fell however when he saw that Akai Shur rose out of the lava and began to take a deep breath. Pure white flames spewed from Akai Shur's mouth and enveloped Naruto's upper body. Immediately his classic orange and blue jumpsuit was burnt to cinders. Surprisingly Naruto wasn't dead. He felt a burning sensation on the left side of his chest but other than that he was fine. Once the gout of flames stopped Naruto looked down to see that he had been branded with the mark of the dragon sage. The symbol was that of a sleeping dragon, waiting to be disturbed in order to wreak havoc upon his enemies. Akai Shur spoke once more the full power of the dragon's lies in your hands, use it wisely. With that, Naruto was poofed back into his own world. He appeared right where he originally disappeared. Turning his head slightly he could see Jiraiya pacing back and forth in worry. Naruto chuckled what's wrong you old perv. You worried about me? Jiraiya's head shot in the direction of Naruto's voice. Jiraiya straight up tackled Naruto to the ground and said oh thank goodness you came back. I don't how I would have told the Hokage that one of his citizens was missing because of me if you didn't. Naruto deadpanned him great, thanks for asking. Jiraiya looked at him and said oh right, what the hell happened to you? And why do you have no shirt? Well to make a long story short, I was transported to the realm of the dragons and I became a dragon sage Naruto said while pointing at the symbol above his heart. Jiraiya's face became serious and he said simply tell me everything. 
Jiriya stood completely stunned by the tale Naruto had just recited. He couldn't believe any of the things he heard and yet Naruto could prove them all. From the gashes on his back to the mark of the dragon on his chest, Naruto proved that his story was indeed real. Jiriya took a deep breath to calm himself. The things this boy was telling him put him in a state of awe. To think that the dragon still existed and that this boy was able to summon them. Jiraiya chuckled and thought, he really is his father's son. So Naruto, did these dragons tell you anything about what they can do or what they can teach you? Jiraiya asked. Naruto shook his head, coming to the realization that all he really saw them do was spit fire. Jiraiya held his chin in thought, there is usually some specialization when it comes to summons. He couldn't bring himself to believe that every dragon did the exact same thing so he said to Naruto I want you to summon one. Naruto looked at him like he'd grown a second head. Are you crazy? Those guys are huge. I can't summon them here. Just do it Naruto. He huffed as he moved some distance away from Jiriya, bit his thumb and started going through the hand seals. He channeled his chakra and slammed his hand onto the ground. In a poof of smoke appeared, a very tiny reptilian. It was about a foot long, light blue with tiny wings and big eyes. Naruto stared down at his summon, dumbfounded. I thought you'd be a lot bigger Naruto said to the dragon. The summon looked at Naruto and beeped its head to the side. Can't you speak? Naruto asked. In response the dragon beeped its head to the other side. Guess not. Jiriya was still stunned in silence but finally his curiosity took over and he asked so what exactly can he do? I don't know. He responded. Naruto looked to the tiny dragon and said you wanna show us what you can do little guy. The flying reptile now turned its attention to Jiriya. He looked back to Naruto for a moment and then suddenly took off the ground and quickly latched onto Jiriya's arm. What the Jiriya was cut off when he saw the summon start sparking. If you looked close enough you could see arcs of electricity dancing around its small body and in between the spines on its back. This electric energy was then expelled in a sphere that enveloped most of the Toad Sage's arm. His arm began to convulse violently as pain shot through his system. Jiriya's face scrunched up in pain and he tried to bring his arm up to look at it but it came up too fast and he punched himself in the face sending him thundering to the ground. Naruto began vehemently laughing as Jiriya hit the ground and his summon came running back to him. The dragon quickly ran up Naruto's arm and jumped up onto his head where he laid down in his soft yellow hair. Naruto continued chuckling as Jiriya tried to figure how to get his arm to do as he commanded but no matter what he tried his arm continued to twitch and spasm. Jiriya growled and he stood up while trying to hold his arm in place. Naruto he started. Just how big do these things get? I've seen one almost as tall as the Hokage Tower Naruto responded. The old sage's heart stopped as he tried to fathom the kind of havoc a creature like that could inflict. He glanced toward the small blue summon atop Naruto's head and thought, especially since this tiny one was able to partially incapacitate me. He scoffed, imagine a widespread ability like this on the battlefield. Such power. You know, I'm starting to like this little guy Naruto said while looking upwards. The little guy seemed to sneeze and as a result Naruto's hair puffed out and got even spikier than it already was. Naruto chuckled and said I think this calls for a celebration. Come on Aero sensei you're paying for the ramen. Who said I was paying? Naruto stopped in his tracks and pointed to his new friend. I can make him get the other arm you know. Jiriya threw his hands up in surrender, or rather, hand as his other arm was still twitching wildly. He sighed and wondered how long this took to wear off. In the meantime he might as well enjoy some ramen with his new pupil. Sucks that he has to pay though. Naruto was walking down the streets of Kanoha towards his favorite place in the world. Jiriya was walking beside him and his new friend who he had named Saitiki was nuzzled into Naruto's hair. Evidently Jiriya's arm had stopped twitching and he was feeling much better. As Naruto walked he noticed that the villagers were staring. Of course they were, he thought, they always do. But as he be pies their features closer he realized that these weren't the stares he'd become accustomed to. Their eyes held no hatred or disgust but instead had shock and fascination. 
It seemed that everyone, from the civilians to the off-duty shinobi, were taken aback by the creature resting atop his head. Naruto chuckled softly, Saitiki must really be something for them to not be glaring at me right now. He thought. He grinned wide when he saw the ramen shop in the distance. Naruto dashed off and yelled back come on Aero sensei I'm hungry. This is going to hurt my wallet Jiriya whined as he caught up with his new pupil. Naruto took a seat and waited for someone to greet him. I am stepped out of the back as Jiriya took a seat next to Naruto. Her eyes lit up as she saw her favorite customer. Naruto-kun. It's been so long how have you been? She asked. I've been good I am nay, it's been kinda hard training for the Chunin exams though. He answered. I am smiled but then she noticed some blue in his normally blonde hair. Upon closer inspection she noticed that this blue blob was scaly and moving. Naruto-kun what's on your head? She asked fearfully, knowing him it could be anything. Naruto lifted the summon off of his head and placed him on the countertop. I am finally got a good look at the creature and, small as it may be, it was still rather intimidating. This is my dragon summon, I call him Saitiki. Saitiki looked at Ayam and they locked eyes. Even though she was a simple civilian and never had shinobi training of any sort, she could see that this tiny creature held devastating power and potential. It was locked away waiting to be unleashed. Jiraiya spoke up for the first time didn't we come here for food Naruto? Oh right. One bowl of miso ramen for me please. Same for me. Ayam tore her eyes away from the summon and said coming right up and she went to work on making them their meals. Naruto, I'm not sure if you should use your summons in the Chunnin exams. They could easily kill your competition. Naruto looked surprised, he had just gotten the coolest summons and now he couldn't use them. Come on pervy sage I'm sure that everything will be fine, plus I know not to summon the really big ones, that's just overkill. Jiraiya sighed, he glanced toward Saitiki and laughed as the dragon had his tongue out due to the smell of ramen. Then he got an idea Naruto. He shouted startling the blonde. As soon as we're done here we'll get right back to training, I know exactly what you can do to get stronger. Their food had arrived and after they finished eating Jiraiya said to Naruto I need you to wait at the training grounds while I run some errands. Naruto deadpanned you're not gonna peep on the hot springs again are you? Jiriya scowled no. Why don't you have any respect for your elders? Because you're a pervert. Naruto said matter of factly. Jiriya walked away mumbling something about being a super pervert. The time for training was over. Jiriya had taught him as best as he could and Naruto felt that he was ready. He stood in the ring silently, gazing over the immeasurable amount of people looking down from the stands above. He stood next to six others, all of them his competition. It seemed that some people were missing. As he looked towards his competition he realized that Sasuke was absent. Sakura gazed down into the arena and she began to worry. Where are Naruto and Sasuke? They can't miss this. Ino looked to her friend in confusion. Naruto is right there Sakura, standing next to Shikamaru. What? Sakura once again looked into the stadium and glanced to the figure beside Shikamaru. The figure in question looked up into stands and revealed his face. It was definitely Naruto but something was off, the clothes didn't match. To Sakura's surprise he wasn't wearing his regular orange attire but instead had black shinobi pants and sandals and a chain mesh shirt underneath a blue hooded jacket with the hood up. His sandals were the strangest though as they seemed to have a sort of metal trimming. Is that really Naruto? She wondered. Naruto began to wonder about Sasuke's whereabouts. It isn't like Sasuke to miss something like this, even if he had to drag himself here. Alright everyone pay attention, there were some slight changes to the matchups, this is the new roster, take a good look at it. Everyone be pised the matchups and after a minute the proctor spoke up once more the terrain is different than the preliminaries but the rules are the same, the match continues until one contestant either forfeits or dies. The contestants for the first match are, Naruto Uzumaki in Niji Hyuji-A, the rest of you can head to the waiting area. The four others walked off leaving Naruto and Niji alone in the arena. They stared one another down each remembering the last words they'd spoken to each other. 
You got anything to say to me? Niji sneered. Only what I told you the last time. I vow to win. Niji beepized everything about Naruto looking for signs of weakness, he found none. He has the look, he's determined and more sure of himself. No matter, destiny has decided me the winner. Let the first match of the finals begin. The proctor announced. I can't wait to see the look of despair on your face when you realize you made a promise you can't possibly coup. Niji could not finish his sentence as Naruto flashed in front of him and landed a punch that sent him reeling. He quickly recovered and planted his feet, clutching his nose. He glared at Naruto who was in the same position with his fist still extended. I'll show you what happens when you fight destiny. He roared. Niji broke out into a run and jabbed at Naruto who slapped it away and threw a counter punch. Niji dodged it and once again jabbed at Naruto's chakra points. They continued this close counter exchange until Niji gained the upper hand, landing a blow on Naruto's shoulder that sent him rolling back a few feet. I missed, Niji thought. Do you understand now? You have no hope of beating me. He said. Naruto scoffed get real. I was just checking you out is all. Naruto rose up off the ground and formed four clones. Niji could see the chakra networks of each clone and he noticed they were all identical. All four Naruto clones pulled a kunai and surrounded Niji. The original Naruto stayed back and watched as the clones charged in and as his opponent easily dodged attacks from all sides and danced around his clones as if they were untrained children. One by one his clones were dispatched by Niji and his gentle fist technique. This guy, he must have eyes in the back of his head. Niji looked over to Naruto menacingly. Why keep fighting? You were decided the loser once I was picked to be your opponent Niji stated. Naruto scowled. All this talk about destiny, it may be the huge GA way to cave into destiny but it's not mine. Naruto said with conviction. Suddenly Naruto's body erupted with energy. You could see small arcs of electricity all around him, and larger ones jumping from from limb to limb and from his fingertips to the ground. Although his hair was covered by the hood he was wearing you could tell each strand stood straight up. Niji looked in awe at his opponent. What is this, he wondered. He beepized Naruto closer. Lightning Jutsu. No. It's different, it's real. But then where could it be coming from? If one were to look closely they would see something shifting underneath Naruto's blue hood. Round number two Naruto mumbled as he rushed forward towards his enemy. Naruto blurred out of sight and appeared only inches in front of Niji. Every muscle in Niji's body tensed and he struck out at the blonde blur, reacting on instinct alone. Naruto ducked under the strike and drove his fist deep into Niji's midsection. Niji flew back a few feet and rolled to a stop. Naruto's punch had caused some serious pain but what worried him even more was the electric current he could feel coursing through him. As he tried to rise back up to his feet his body began to convulse violently, resisting each attempt to move. Good, Naruto thought. His nerves are shot. What did you do to me? Niji roared in frustration. Wouldn't you like to know Naruto said mockingly. Niji could see him gearing up for another attack, but he still couldn't maneuver well. Naruto shot forwards again, rearing back his leg to kick Niji in the chin. Niji had no other option than to just go limp and drop like a sack of potatoes. He fell to the ground and avoided the attack which sailed overhead. Niji rolled away as best as he could. Naruto continued his offensive onslaught and Niji continued to stumble and dodge until he once again had full control over his body. Niji jumped up onto his feet and scowled at Naruto. He was scuffed up from all of the attacks but he could still fight. So my cloak isn't as potent as Saitiki's attacks. I just need another solid hit, but this guy's like a slippery snake, Naruto thought. Niji also took this moment of calm to be Epi's his opponent. He realized that whatever this cloak was it increased Naruto's speed and strength while also making each attack debilitating. It is a quite deadly technique. He thought. But there must be a way around it. Both fighters were ready for another bout. 
They shot forward and began trade blows, each one dodging the other's strikes knowing how dangerous they were. Naruto threw a punch aimed at Niji's head. Niji slipped it and aimed a strike at a chakra point in Naruto's shoulder. Naruto dodged to the side and sent a kick towards Niji's midsection. The kick was moving much faster than his punches. Must use rotation. Niji thought. He began to emit chakra from his whole body but the attack was too fast. The kick struck him and sent him stumbling. Naruto pressed his advantage and attacked again, but to his surprise Niji dodged it and created some distance between them. Naruto looked in awe at Niji who seemed to be checking the nerve response in his limbs. Niji's was surprised as well when he dodged that attack, he suddenly realized that the chakra he emitted for his rotation dampered Naruto's electrical cloak. Now Niji had the upper hand. For the first time he went on the offensive. He ran at Naruto and as Naruto lashed out with another kick, Niji coated his arm in chakra and caught it in the crease of his arm. Naruto's eyes went wide as Niji began to strike the chakra points in his leg. Naruto brought his other leg up and kicked at Niji's head. Niji blocked it but it rocked him and he released his grip on Naruto. He used this opportunity to escape, but the damage had been done. Naruto's leg was beginning to tense up. Naruto increased the distance between them once again. It seemed that for now the battle would continue this way, with short bursts of action and then separation. To engage in close combat for an extended period of time was dangerous for both contenders. Niji had recovered from the kick and was now beepizing Naruto in the same way. If the battle continued this way one of them may very well drop dead. His legs are dangerous Niji thought. I can't believe he already found a way around my cloak, thought Naruto. I can't believe he's really going toe to toe with Niji Hyuji-A. And he's holding his own. Shouted Ino. Sakura was staring down at Naruto in awe, she couldn't believe that person in the arena was her goofy teammate. The teammate I always put down for being weak. Sakura thought solemnly. I guess Naruto's a lot stronger than you thought her Sakura. Ino said turning to her friend. Yeah, I guess so. It only took a minute but Naruto and Niji were both ready to fight once more. It was Naruto who closed the distance. When in range Naruto threw a right hook trying to catch Niji by surprise, but his opponent was prepared. Moving his head out of the way Niji struck chakra points in Naruto's arm as it passed by. In realization Naruto quickly retracted his arm and kicked at Niji's left side. Niji's eyes went wide as the lightning fast kick struck him, but not before he could damper the effects of the cloak. When the kick landed Niji flitched and Naruto used this split second to press the advantage. Naruto landed two solid hits into Niji's gut and one straight to his face that snapped his head back. Niji brought his arms up to defend. Naruto saw this and started to launch another kick. When Niji once again saw Naruto's leg moving at blistering speed he brought his arms down to defend, fearing the power of his kicks, but it was a feint. As soon as Niji's arms were out of the way Naruto stopped his kick and pummeled him with as many punches as he could to his face and body. I have to turn the tide. Niji thought in frustration. Niji coated his hand in chakra and as Naruto threw another powerful punch Niji caught it and retaliated with a palm strike to Naruto's jaw that snapped his head to the side and dazed him. What happened? Naruto thought. Wasn't I just winning? The crowd in the stands were roaring and buzzing with energy seeing the intensity of these hand-to-hand -hand bouts. Niji, now having the upper hand, struck as many chakra points as he could in Naruto's chest and arms. Naruto could feel every blow land, he could feel at least 10 or 12 strikes. Growing frustrated Naruto suddenly jumped into the air and brought up his knee to meet Niji's chin. Niji quickly tilted his head and jumped back. Naruto saw this as an opportunity and once more retreated to a safe distance. Naruto began to cough up some blood and he dropped to a knee breathing heavily. There was a strange wheezing sound coming from him and he realized that it was now very hard to breathe. As he looked over to Niji he could see that blood and bruises covered his face and as he looked even closer he could see Niji's entire body shaking and convulsing slightly. He was able to adapt quickly in order to stay in the fight, if I don't change tactics now one of us is gonna die. 
Naruto thought. Naruto strained to get to his feet. I wasn't expecting to use this in my first fight but there's no helping it. Naruto thought. Naruto began to slowly reach for his hood. Niji looked on curiously but stood tense and ready for another fight, but what happened next stunned him, as well as the rest of the crowd. The stands were full of cheering people and excitement but now it was deathly quiet. Each member of the audience was stunned into silence. Naruto had pulled down his hood to reveal Saitiki, a lump of blue laying in his blonde hair. Suddenly being exposed to light made him perk up. Saitiki blinked a couple times and took in the area. There was complete silence up in the stands. The audience stood there, mouth agape, staring down at Naruto. Then people began to whisper. What is that? What's he doing? I think that's a dragon. Sakura's eyes widened as she overheard that last one. She looked to Naruto in amazement now. How strong have you gotten Naruto? She wondered. Niji stared dumbfounded at the creature before him. He'd never heard of anything like it, and yet, there it was in the possession of someone he'd deemed a non-redeemable loser. Saitiki, keep him where his is Naruto said to his summon. Saitiki let out a low growl in confirmation and Naruto brought up his arms and crossed his fingers. Realization flashed through Niji's mind as he saw the hand sign. He began to close the distance but a bolt from Saitiki almost too fast for him to dodge zipped by him and stopped him in his tracks. Niji Lock led eyes with the summon for a split second before a barrage of electric bolts were sent hurtling towards Niji. It took everything he had to dodge them and he couldn't move toward Naruto at all. Naruto on the other hand was struggling to gather his chakra. So many of his chakra points were closed off he didn't even really know if he could make shadow clones, but he was trying. He just needed some time. Niji struggled to dodge these lightning shots but he knew he needed to stop Naruto from making clones. He quickly backflipped to avoid a shot and in midair pulled out two kunai. He planted his feet and before Saitiki could fire more shots, launched them at Naruto. Suddenly there was a puff of smoke and three clones appeared in front of the original, two of them holding a kunai. Saitiki shot up into the air and Niji followed his movement. Just then the two clones threw the kunai and rushed forward. Niji was able to dodge one kunai and catch the other. Perfect, the Naruto's thought collectively. Saitiki fired another shot but with his Bayaku gone he saw that the aim was off so he kept his focus on the clones. Niji's eyes widened as he felt pain shoot through his arm. The kunai. Niji roared. He hastily dropped the now electrified object but it was too late, the nerves in his arm were shot and the clones were upon him. He took the Juken stance as best he could with one arm. As the first clone rushed toward him Niji spun and kicked the clone in the head that sent him sprawling to the ground. One down, Niji thought as he heard a poof. The two remaining clones engaged him together while the original stood back. Niji could only dodge their attacks as he waited to regain movement in his other arm. He now found himself surrounded by the three Naruto's in a sort of triangle. He remembered how in the beginning of the fight Naruto's clones rushed in. I can use rotation to dispatch of all of them simultaneously, Niji thought. Just as he suspected they all charged forward but as Niji began to expel his chakra and rotate his body Saitiki shot a bolt that stunned him. The Naruto's continued their charge and took hold of Niji, capturing both his arms putting him in a headlock. Now Saitiki. The original yelled. The dragon began to plummet at an incredible speed and he was headed straight for Niji. Saitiki smacked into Niji's chest with enough force to knock the air out of his lungs and he latched on. With Saitiki now in place the original released the headlock and watched as his summon began to glow and spark violently. Within the second Niji and the clones were enveloped in a sphere of electrical energy and the clones dispersed. Niji fell onto his back smoking slightly and Saitiki took to the sky once more. Niji stared up to the clouds dazed and tired. He could see a dark silhouette soaring through the sky. A bird free from its cage. The winner is Naruto Uzumaki. The stadium erupted into cheers and shouts of congratulations. Naruto simply looked up to them and smiled one of his rare genuine smiles. 
Naruto was walking up the steps to the waiting area, very slowly. He was holding on the railing and his breathing was ragged. Every step filled his legs with pain. Niji had got some good shots in. Naruto chuckled to himself. They don't call him a prodigy for nothing. He thought. He grew more serious as an image of Sasuke falsed through his mind. He tightened his grip on the railing and his knuckles turned white. As he entered the waiting area he could see the Kanoha 12 minus Sasuke and Niji. When he entered the area it suddenly got very quiet. He could tell that everyone was taking glances at him as he walked to stand next to Shikamaru. In the case of Sakura she was outright staring. He stood next to the shadow user and asked how's it going Shika. He responded in his usual monotonous voice. Troublesome. Hey Naruto, what exactly is that thing? He asked pointing to Saitiki who was still stretching his wings over the arena. Naruto smiled broadly, raised two fingers to his mouth and whistled. Saitiki quickly changed direction and headed straight for his summoner. Saitiki landed on his head once more and began to netzel into his hair. This is my little buddy Saitiki, he's a dragon summon. Naruto stated while looking up at his blue friend. A dragon summon? I didn't know dragons existed, I thought they were a myth, Shikamaru thought. It seemed everyone else in the waiting area thought the same because none of them could take their eyes off of this living legend. As small as Saitiki was, especially compared to the rest of his family back home, he managed to stun these young ninja into silence. Suddenly Saitiki began to spark. Minuscule arcs jumped between the spines on his back. Saitiki reared his head back and, sneezed. All of Naruto's hair instantly puffed up giving him a sort of blonde afro. Noise came back to the waiting area then, some of them laughed others started asking questions, enamored with this cute but dangerous creature. Strangely, one of the loudest members of the Kanoha 12 was now silent. Sakura stood back watching as Naruto turned from person to person answering questions or laughing with them. She suddenly felt very alone. He didn't even look at me when he got up here, she thought. Frowning she furrowed her brow and stomped up to the blonde. She grabbed him and pulled him slightly aside. When their eyes met Naruto's smile dropped ever so slightly but no one could see that. What's up Sakura? He asked politely. Looking at her Naruto could tell she was upset about something. He simply stared at her and waited for a response. Sakura shifted uncomfortably as he stared at her, why had she come up to him? Why did she care whether or not he greeted her? Was it because of his newfound strength? Or something else? These were the questions flowing through Sakura's mind and as Naruto began to speak she found an answer. Naruto, do you think you could help me train? She asked with a blush. Although Sakura decided to go with strength as her answer for approaching him, there was something else gnawing at the back of her mind. After hearing her question Naruto was outright frowning. But a sad smile came to his face, almost as if he was reflecting on something. You see Sakura. He started. The past me would have loved to help you train but spending time with Erosenin helped me realize something. You only ever talk to me when you want something from me. That's not true. Sakura objected. There have been so many times where you could have genuinely become my friend, hell, I wanted us to be even more than that, but every time you shot me down. You don't get any more second chances Sakura. Having said his piece Naruto turned and walked away. Sakura was now painfully aware of the lack of her usual Chan suffix and it stung. Bad. Naruto drifted back over to Shikamaru and friends. Naruto was feeling good, when Jiraiya first explained to him how toxic Sakura was he refused to believe it, but the more he thought about it the more sense it made. He was hoping that maybe since he changed during his training Sakura would have too, but Jiraiya always said he was too optimistic. A voice pulled him from his thoughts. By the way, that was a pretty good fight Naruto. I might be losing my mind but I actually think you were using your head. Shikamaru joked. Naruto laughed I picked up a thing or two while training. A voice was heard from down in the arena. The next match is between Sasuke Uchiha and Gara of the Sand, will the contestants please enter the arena? Said the proctor. 
Gara was there in an instant. He had a very calm exterior but with every passing second his killing intent increased. Both the proctor and the crowd waited silently for the Uchiha. The last of his clan, finally they would be able to see him in action. Time continued to fly by and Naruto began to worry. Where is he? Naruto thought. At this rate he'll be disqualified and I won't get my fight. A full minute passed and the proctor broke the silence. The contestant Sasuke Uchiha has failed to enter the arena and thus is disqualified from the exams. There were shouts from the crowd, but in that moment smoke erupted from the arena's center and as it cleared it revealed a raven-haired boy and his cyclops of a sensei. Yo, we're not late are we? Kakashi asked nonchalantly. Just a little. Was the proctor's response. After a moment word passed down to the proctor that Sasuke Uchiha was not to be disqualified and the fight would proceed as planned. And, the fight was not pushed back like in canon. That's a relief Kakashi mumbled. He stepped out of the arena leaving Sasuke and Gara to face off. Sasuke stared down his foe, not forgetting the tragedy that befell his previous opponent. Gara, on the other hand had a calm exterior that betrayed the look in his eyes. His eyes held the look of a hungry predator and nothing else. Begin. The proctor shouted. Sasuke wasted no time and threw some kunai that were easily stopped by Gara's sand. In an instant Sasuke vanished from sight and appeared behind Gara, he threw a punch that mirrored the form of Rock Lee. He landed a blow to the face that sent Gara flying. He's like the other one, Gara thought. Slowly Gara rose to his feet and stared Sasuke down, daring him to attack once more. Sasuke obliged. He rushed in and ducked under an attack closing the distance quickly. When he was in range Sasuke doubled Gara over with a kick and followed up with another punch to his face. This time however, Gara was not sent flying, in fact he didn't move at all. The reason for this was a solid wall of sand that was being used as a brace, keeping him standing. Sasuke tried to retreat but couldn't detach his hand from Gara's face. From his doubled over position Gara's locked eyes with his prey. His face seemed to be melting into sand and that sand was slowly making its way up Sasuke's arm, trapping him. Sasuke's eyes widened in surprise. He released his sand armor in order to trap me, Sasuke realized. Did you think you could fight me like the other one? Did you think that I wouldn't adapt when a weakness was exposed? Gara let out a frightening cackle as he delighted in his opponent helplessness. Sasuke screamed in pain as the sand covering his left hand and wrist attempted to crush it. Fortunately for him the sand from just Gara's armor wasn't able to place enough pressure to break the bone. It was fractured but not broken. Almost simultaneously, a tendril of sand wrapped itself around his leg and threw him into the stadium walls causing it to crack. Gara kept up the onslaught and tried to crush Sasuke under, you guessed it, more sand. Sasuke quickly rolled out of the way and got on his feet. He continuously dodged attack after attack before reaching into his pouch, pulling as many smoke bombs as he could and tossing them into the air. They burst and covered the battleground in thick smoke. Sasuke activated his Sharingan giving him the advantage. Even through all the smoke Sasuke could see Gara and the sand he pumped his chakra through. Gara was turning in every direction at every little sound looking for his opponent. Come out Sasuke Achiha. Mother wants your blood. What's wrong with this guy, Sasuke thought. He quickly thought of a plan and reached into his bag for another kunai. Recalling the terrain, he could distinctly remember some trees that stood tall on the other side of the arena. Sasuke pictured his surroundings as best as he could and tied a paper bomb to his kunai. Launching the kunai across the arena Sasuke allowed himself a moment celebration as he heard the thunk of a kunai hitting wood. Gara Kwiki turned to this sound showing his back to Sasuke and as the paper bomb exploded, two things happened. 1. Sasuke began to charge up his trump card. 2. Gara began to wildly attack anything he could in the direction the explosion came from, laughing as he did. After a minute of attacking without hearing any screams of death and pain Gara stopped to listen once more. He turned to a new sound that was coming from behind him. It sounded like chirping birds and it was getting closer very quickly. 
Through the smoke Gara could see a blue glow screeching toward him, and before he could react it was in front of him. Sasuke reared back and attempted to plunge his arm through his opponent's chest but at the last moment a pillar of sand shot up slowing down the attack significantly. Sasuke's hand went through the pillar and stopped just before Gara's heart, drawing blood in the process. Sasuke was stuck once more but Gara was too stunned to take advantage. Gara stared down as he felt a warm liquid touch his skin. He finally came to the realization that he was bleeding. Suddenly Gara let out the loudest most blood-curdling scream that made everybody's hair stand on end. Even the Kagi were standing at full attention now, although for different reasons. Sasuke gulped and his heart started to race as he futilely struggled to escape. The sand began to move erratically in every direction with most of it swirling around Gara as he continued to scream. Temari, Kenkuro and their sensei Baki were in the stands dumbfounded as to what just happened. They had shot out of their seats in panic after seeing Sasuke use his Chidori. He hurt him. He actually hurt him. Temari exclaimed. This isn't good. He wouldn't transform right now would he? Yelled Kenkuro. Let's hope not. The entire operation hinges on Gara. Transformation this early would be disastrous. We just aren't ready, and if that boy is anything to go on, the leaf shinobi are tough. Baki calmly stated. Gara had never stopped screaming and as he continued, the screams became more pained and animalistic. His sand seemed to be consuming him now. It crawled out from the gourd on his back onto the right side of his face and down his right arm, morphing him into a half-human half-sand beast. The sand was gathering around Gara and molding onto his body. What was holding Sasuke hostage had retreated to form part of Gara's transformed arm. Although he was free, Sasuke could only stare at the monster that stood before him. The killing intent radiating off of him was palpable. Gara's half-demonic face looked up and locked eyes with Sasuke. One of his eyes was yellow and his teeth on that side had been elongated into razor-sharp knives. Sasuke could feel that eye gazing into him, promising one thing. Death. Sasuke gulped and took a step back. In that same instant Gara swung his transformed arm through the air, batting Sasuke away like a fly. Sasuke's body soared through the air and rolled to a stop on the ground. The power of that one swipe was enough to crack ribs. Everyone in the stands were buzzing with excitement, waiting to see what would happen next. They were all wondering if Gara was even human and if the Uchiha boy still had a chance. Strangely, feathers to began to fall in front of their faces, and their excitement was replaced by a drossy feeling. One by one citizens began to fall into a deep sleep. Higher level ninja like Kakashi and perceptive genin like Shikamaru quickly dispelled the genjutsu. Unfortunately in Naruto's case, he was sleeping with his face on the dirty floor. On the other hand, Saitiki was still up and about. The dragon delivered a small shock to Naruto jolting him back into the real world. Wah! Was what Naruto mumbled out. That's the signal to move out. Prepare yourselves. Baki said as he prepared for battle. But wait it's still too early. There's no way that all of our forces are prepared for the assault yet. Temari shrieked. Baki gave his student a hard glare. The signal was given, now it's time for you to do your job. Temari was shaking, her nerves were all over the place. Regardless, she grabbed her fan and got ready. Sand and sound shinobi began to pour out of their hiding places, clashing with the leaf shinobi. At the sight of this the third Hokage prepared himself for what he knew would come next. In that moment the Kazika Gi attacked and the battle was on. Naruto was slowly rising up from the floor trying to comprehend what was happening. There were tiny skirmishes breaking out all over the stadium, but why? Naruto. He heard a voice yell. It was Sakura, she was running toward him. What's happening? Naruto frantically asked. The sand and sound are attacking the village. Kakashi sensei told me to go around and break as many people out of the game jutsu as I can. So that's what put me to sleep, Naruto thought. He looked around and focused his gaze in the center of the arena. The fight between Sasuke and Gara was still raging on and it was not looking good for Sasuke. 
Without saying another word to Sakura he leaped over the railing and down into the arena with Saitiki following close behind. Sasuke was getting battered. He just couldn't compete with the power of Gara's transformation. He dodged as many hits as he could but there was no end in sight. In an open field like this with nowhere to hide and no way to retreat all Sasuke could do was survive. Suddenly, for the first time Gara stopped his relentless attacks and turned to catch a kunai in his sand arm. In the next second there was an explosion and the sand was blown off of his arm. Naruto landed next to Sasuke. You alright? He asked. Gara glared with pure hatred at the blonde ninja as his arm reformed. I didn't ask for your help Sasuke said. But you needed it. Naruto replied. He sent a glare over to Naruto but noticed Saitiki sitting on his head. He blinked and for a moment wondered if he was seeing things. In the end he decided to ask about it later. Saitiki Naruto whispered get his other arm. Saitiki nodded and quickly fired an electric shot that slammed into Gara's regular arm. Pain shot through his body but was dampered on his transformed side. Naruto quickly activated his electric cloak and kicked Gara in the head, which caused him to stumble a bit. Sasuke didn't miss the opening and rushed in to plant his foot in Gara's chest sending him tumbling backwards. As Gara got back on his feet Naruto and Sasuke continued to keep up the pressure. Their string of combo attacks finally ended with Sasuke kicking the back of his leg to bring him to his knees and Naruto following up with a hard kick to Gara's face. They both stepped back. They were breathing hard, but felt proud of themselves and of their teamwork. But alas, Gara rose to his feet once more. There was glint in his bloodshot eye, like he was enjoying this. More and more sand began to latch onto his body, leaving only his legs exposed and forming a tail. I think we made him angry Naruto quipped. Why won't he just stay down? Sasuke shouted. Gara placed both his hands on the ground in front of him and took up a strange position. Naruto realized what he was going to do but it was too late. Oh, shit was his only thought. It played like slow motion in his head. Gara propelled himself forward using his arms, shooting past Naruto and grabbing Sasuke in his hands. Gara continued to soar through the air until he slammed Sasuke into the concrete walls. Naruto heard the impact before he could even turn around to see what happened. As he turned to see, Gara punched Sasuke with all his might, pushing him deeper into the hole in the concrete and knocking him unconscious. Gara was about to keep going until the Uchiha was dead but he was hit by one of Saitiki's attacks. He turned to look at Naruto, completely unfazed. Gara's yellow, in human eyes glowed with murderous intent as he prepared to repeat what he'd just done. But as he took the same stance, he suddenly began to scream incoherently. Yes mother, he said shakily after some time. Sleep possum jutsu. Gara erupted into a mountain of sand that took the form of a gargantuan tanuki. It was Shikaku the sand spirit. Naruto looked up at this beast with a sense of hopelessness. Unconsciously, he glanced at his wrist. The sleeve was rolled back just enough to expose Chishiki's mark. They were his last hope, but it would take almost everything he had to summon them. Naruto pulled back his sleeve, bit his thumb and wiped the blood across all three marks. There were two giant poofs of smoke and Naruto dropped to his hands and knees, completely exhausted. In front of him stood Chishiki and Chikara in all their magnificence. Seeing these two stand in front of him, he felt hope return to his heart. Breathing heavily Naruto mumbled I still have a chance. Chishiki and Chikara stood proudly side by side in front of Naruto, as if they were his shields protecting him from harm. Chishiki stood calmly and seemed to be prepared for anything. Chikara on the other hand, seemed esthetic. He was almost bouncing with excitement. The first time you summon me and you pit me against Shikaku. I'm beginning to like you brat. You seem very pleased brother. Chishiki noted. Of course I am, it's been too long since my last true fight. Chikara stated. Naruto was still on the ground observing the two dragons before him. It was then he realized there was a brother missing. Hey, where's Jakuna? He asked. Chishiki turned to him upon hearing the question. 
You attempted to summon all of us at once but did not have enough chakra. You are now suffering from minute chakra exhaustion. Notice the ragged breathing and fatigue. So summoning you two took everything I had. Then, will I ever be able to summon him? Naruto said as an image of the Dragon King flashed through his mind. In any case, I recommend you sit back and let us handle the threat. We are not at full strength without our brother but we should be able to handle the one tails. Naruto nodded his head and slowly made his way over to where Sasuke was still embedded in the wall. As he approached the battle between beasts had begun but he ignored it for the moment. Naruto dropped down and pulled Sasuke out of his hole and checked his pulse. Naruto let out a sigh of relief upon feeling a slow but steady pulse. With the thought of Sasuke's untimely death out of his mind, he now focused his attention on the battle unfolding before him. As Naruto was making his way towards Sasuke, Shikaku and the dragons sized each other up. Chikara and Chishiki were smaller than Shikaku but they had many advantages. For one, there were two of them. They were also much more agile and together they had sufficient firepower. Within an instant the battle roared to life and every living creature in the area could feel the power emanating from these three. Chikara was the first to attack, spitting out a fireball that exploded upon contact with Shikaku's face sending blackened sand in every direction. The damage was minimal and regenerated in a matter of seconds. It would take much more to take down one of the bijou. Shikaku responded by hurling dense balls of sand at an incredible speed towards the two dragons. Reacting quickly they both took to the skies to dodge the attack. The sand impacted the ground, sending dirt and rocks many feet into the air. Without hesitation Chikara exhaled white-hot flames that engulfed Shikaku as he tried his best to block it with his arm. Chishiki held back and watched intently, bee-pising his opponent before deciding on the best course of action. As Chikara's flames died down he was preparing to dive in and shatter the glass that was created, but upon closer inspection Shikaku's arm had only been blackened and was smoking slightly. Chikara, seeing that his flames were ineffective, quickly retreated and met up with Chishiki to see if he came up with anything. His sand is more heat resistant than I thought, what can we do? Chikara asked. I thought I told you to consult with me before attacking. Chishiki said slightly irritated. They quickly had to separate in order to dodge a powerful air bullet shot from below. Chikara deadpanned and asked is this really the time? I suppose not. In any case if your flames do not work we must work together. If we combine our breath attacks then we may be able to see significant results. You use too many fancy words brother. Yes, yes I know he said exasperated. Suddenly Shikaku's arm cut through the air, nearly knocking Chikara out of the sky. Chishiki looked down in confusion, as they should have been out of his range for physical attacks. The arm fell back down to the ground causing the ground to shake. Chishiki could see that it was disturbingly long. Evidently Shikaku had taken the sand from his other arm and moved it to make one extremely long arm like lasso. He continued to fling this monstrosity into the air cackling like a madman while he did it. It cut through the air with surprising speed and would do serious damage if it actually connected. Luckily for the dragon duo Shikaku somehow managed to hit himself in the head while the arm fell back down to earth, causing him to get angry and throw it into the arena wall instead. He's insane. Chishiki noted. Thirty feet to the right of where Naruto was sat with Sasuke, the arena wall exploded. Shikaku's casual toss of his arm had obliterated the solid concrete barrier. Naruto's heart was pounding and he desperately wanted to move to a safer area but he didn't have the energy and he didn't want to leave Sasuke unattended. He could not believe the power that this creature held and was also amazed that his summons were holding out. He moved his attention to the surrounding area, the sand and sound shinobi were being dealt with slowly and their numbers were dwindling. Naruto's eyes widened for a moment as he realized something. The Kagi seats were empty and that only meant one thing. He searched every inch in his immediate vicinity before seeing some explosions going off on a nearby rooftop. He could vaguely make out two figures clashing. Naruto's heart seemed to stop. Gigi is strong but he's too old to fight. If that's really him over there why is no one helping? 
Naruto was ripped from his worries by a feeling of life-threatening danger and his attention was brought back to the battle between beasts. Chishiki and Chikara were trying to keep their distance. They felt Shikaku gathering power and wanted to be cautious. Orbs of blue and red were gathering together to form a dark sphere in front of Shikaku's mouth. They could tell from the look of this thing that being hit by it meant certain death. Shikaku had completely formed the orb and aimed it at Chikara, who was going to begin flying up into the clouds as to not be seen. His ascent was cut short however as something grabbed onto one of his legs. A stiff pillar of sand had extended from where Shikaku threw his arm and was keeping him in place. Chikara struggled to escape and even tried once again to utilize his flames but Shikaku launched his attack. The Bijou Bomb, this orb of pure destructive energy was hurtling towards Chikara and for the first time he felt completely powerless. As the Bijou Bomb was mere inches from his body, he erupted into smoke and disappeared. Naruto had sent him back to the throat of the world. The sphere of death continued on into the air and exploded, blasting away every cloud in the sky. Although he was relieved his brother had escaped in time, now Chishiki was left alone to face off against the One Tails. My chances of success have dropped significantly, he thought. He had an idea but without Chikara it would be much harder. Shikaku seemed to be celebrating the fact that he killed Chikara and Chishiki took this moment to land next to Naruto. I need your help. Do you know any fire jutsu? He said cutting to the chase. No, but. Naruto looked down at Sasuke. He knelt down and shook the boy while also yelling in his ear. Surprisingly, even after the damage he took, Sasuke awoke looking confused. Sasuke we need your help, can you stand? He was dazed and flinching from the pain, and then he saw what Gara had become. He couldn't believe that monster used to be a person. He was also completely astounded at the sight of a giant lizard with wings. It wasn't even the fact that dragons were real that caused him to falter, but more that in the presence of this creature, the power of human shinobi seemed insignificant. Naruto's words finally sunk in and he nodded. Sasuke slowly began to rise, using the wall as support. He could feel his muscles aching and every draw of breath caused him pain. As he righted himself he asked what do you need me for? We should get off the ground first, I will inform you afterwards. Chishiki quickly scooped them up and tossed them onto his back before taking off once again. He soared above Shikaku's head which caused the bijou to refocus his attention. Shikaku was quick to resume attacking and shot four air bullets hoping to knock Chishiki out of the sky. Hang on tight. Chishiki rolled left and right to avoid the attacks and when he saw an opportunity he struck. The dragon brother opened his mouth and something began to take form, gathering in front of his maw. It shaped into a point, almost like a bullet, but it seemed to chill the air around it. As a matter of fact the moisture in the air was freezing upon contact and wisps of chilling smoke fell off it before dissipating. Naruto was amazed at the sight before him. It's an ice attack. I thought dragons only used fire. I can't wait to learn more. Naruto thought. Chishiki propelled the icicle forward, and then he shot another and another. Each one pierced Shikaku's body and crashed into the ground behind him, leaving gaping holes in their wake. But the sand spirit, ever resilient, stood unfazed as the holes in his body closed slowly. It is as I feared, we need a way to destroy the whole body at once. How can we do that? He's huge! Naruto exclaimed. This is where your friend comes in. If he combines his fire with my ice. The water will melt his body. Naruto interrupted. Precisely. Sasuke stayed silent. This was all so strange to him, almost as if he was dreaming. Dragons and monsters. It just seemed so unreal. But there he was, hundreds of feet off the ground and on the back of a talking dragon. Maybe he was dreaming. Can you do it Sasuke? Naruto roused him from his thoughts. What? Can you use your fire with his ice? Sasuke was about to say I don't know that he wasn't sure he had the chakra, but there was something about the way Naruto was looking at him. Like he was trying to figure out exactly how strong Sasuke was, trying to figure out if he was better. 
Sasuke grew determined and nodded, he then moved to stand on Shishiki's head, better positioning himself for what was to come. Ready Sasuke said. Shishiki unleashed a wave of what looked like smoke, but in reality it was trillions upon trillions of tiny, razor-sharp ice shards. An attack like that would quickly rend the flesh off of any who stood in its path. Sasuke immediately went through the hand signs and released his flames. The combination attack resulted in a torrent of water crashing down onto the tailed beast, soaking into his body and causing it to slide and shift unnaturally. Get your nasty liquids off me! Shikaku roared. Sasuke's flames began to die down but Naruto couldn't let that happen, the sand demon was still standing. Naruto placed his hand on Sasuke's back and instantly the Uchiha could feel it. It felt like two bodies of water being connected, except that Naruto's was vastly larger than his own. Even though Naruto was also running low on chakra Sasuke could feel just how cavernous his reserves really were. When did you get this strong, Sasuke wondered. The flames roared back to life as what was left of Naruto's chakra came rushing in. The water continued to pour down on Shikaku who futility tried to escape. His limbs were crumbling, barely holding together and he continued to rant all the while. Finally, Naruto and Sasuke gave out, panting and out of breath they peered down to see a huge uneven pile of wet sand. Some parts of the pile were towered up and huge and the rest was almost flat. Chishiki seemed very pleased with himself but Naruto and Sasuke were too tired to even celebrate. Sasuke seemed to have it worse, his eyes were heavy and it looked like he was going to fall unconscious once again. You okay? Naruto asked. Not dead. Just, don't drop me. Sasuke droned out. He let sleep take him and went limp. Naruto snorted at the thought of Sasuke falling off Chishiki but held him securely. We should land now Naruto said. Chishiki obliged and landed in the arena where there was the least sand. Naruto hopped off his back and set Sasuke down to rest. Suddenly he heard a rumbling. It was coming from the largest pile of sand. As Naruto stared at it he could see it moving slightly, and then he could see yellow eyes peering at him. Shikaku was still alive. His limbs were all but dissolved, his face was disfigured and his body was halfway melted into the ground but he was still there. Somehow this dissolved, melted version of Shikaku was even more terrifying than the original. The sand where Shikaku's mouth would be began to part slowly and just like before blue and red orbs began to gather. Chishiki acted quickly, blowing out his chilling smoke and flapping his wings to spread the cold faster. The effect was almost instant, the water soaked in Shikaku was rapidly chilled and he began to frost over, causing the attack to stop. Naruto let out a breath he didn't know he was holding and thanked Chishiki before moving to finish the fight once and for all. He searched through Sasuke's pouch and grabbed all the explosive tags he could and combining them with his own he rolled them into a ball of death. Naruto aimed for Shikaku's still open mouth and chucked the explosives in. Kobe Chishiki muttered. What? Nothing. Naruto quickly dismissed the strange comment and activated the bomb. Energy erupted out from Shikaku's belly sending frozen sand flying in every direction and finally destroying the tailed beast's body. Gara was also shot out of the sand, he was unconscious and wasn't going to wake up any time soon. Unfortunately for our favorite blonde knucklehead, there is no rest for the weary and in the same moment that Gara hit the ground, an explosion came from that building he'd noticed before. He could feel the pressure wave slam into his chest and he realized then that the battle taking place was far beyond his skill level. Even so, the thought of losing one of his precious people caused him to make rash decisions. He hopped onto Chishiki's back and took off towards the mayhem. I'm on my way Gigi. The end. So how was this part, I hope you like it. And if you like it share this part with your friends, and like the video too. And don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily awesome fanfiction. Okay it's time for me to go. Bye bye.